Google. Well, welcome to Calling Them Out, episode 13.5. Actually, this edition will be in English. Uh, we just have Jose Contreras and with our first uh, Spanish podcast. I hope that you guys enjoy it. And this episode will be the producer, Matt Yeager. And we got our expert and analyst for high school, college, and no, pro baseball. No, you suck on pro baseball. Um, high school, public school, private school, and college, Mr. Tommy O'Farrell. What's going on, everyone? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> we, cannot, we cannot start like that. We cannot start like that. All right, introduce him again. I'm just hey. here so I don't get fined. Uh, we're going to come with everything that uh, that is happening with calls, uh, interviews, and all that. Um, with the public schools on Monday, today there is a there is a there, there is a team that is terrorizing everybody in the private school sector, and nobody's talking about them. Who's that? That will be Carbert Hall. Oh yeah, that's sure Carbert Hall is killing everybody. The they're, they're playing really good the baseball. State. They're doing a, a lot of a lot of the things that that we they the other teams want to do, but they have beat everybody. Tommy. Uh, yeah, so far they uh, they knocked off St. John's in extra innings. Uh, they're supposed to play to Matha tomorrow, um, so that's going to be a big one. Um, they have John Carroll and they have us later on in the season. Uh, they just beat Georgetown Prep earlier this week. They knocked yep. off Garetti on uh, Monday. Um, yeah, I mean, they're playing really good baseball right now. Um, and you know who is uh, the manager of the week for calling them out? Who's that? For Calvert Hall. For Calvert Hall. Brooks Kerr. Brooks, Brooks Kerr. Kerr. And he's uh, doing a really good job with Calvert Hall. Actually, their their offense is just amazing. You know, they, but but what I'm... Yeah, top, I mean, the top of the order is really good. They got Caden Barmer, who gets on base a ton. Um, Pites and Hawk. Pites is going to uh, GW. Uh, Hawk's still uncommitted, but um, they both, they've got good swings. They, uh, they're using the whole field right now. Yeah. Um, They got uh, an inside-out guy who goes backside to go to Mount um, yep. Cove Inspire. Who, and then uh, they got some guys at the bottom of the order that are grinding, and they're throwing strikes. Who, who are we calling? And you know who is the who is the player of the week for the calling them out? Derek Poole. Welcome, Derek. Derek Poole from Curly. Derek, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Hey, man, congratulations. You're the player of the week um, here in calling them out. We are really... I'm surprised with your with your explosive offense um, this week. Um, so mm -hmm. tell us about how is your preparation for for this year, and how are you helping um, Curly to be this successful early in the in, early in the year? Um, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of just training in the winter time, working out, um, hitting every day, mm -hmm. and um, I'm trying to help Curly be successful. You know, we had a rough start to the season, but I feel like we uh, we picked it up, and uh, we just got to keep pushing forward. Yeah, right now you got a tough schedule. So I I, mm -hmm. I, I was watching your your the, the schedule for Curly is gonna be easy up at the end, but but you guys are facing really good teams, and it's been really tough. But you you don't care about that, man. You're killing every freaking pitcher, you know, um, so far, and you're having a, a really good start of the season. So, what what do you think um, you guys need to do to to be better and and to get out of that uh, rough start that, that you have have? Um, I feel like it's just got to be all of us as a team, not just a couple people doing their job, and we just need everyone to step up in a big way and uh, contribute as a team. All right, what is the the field that you most like to to hit um, in the in here in Maryland, basically? You know, so do you think that the the, the The home team advantage, you know, on or you like because I I saw you against Mount San Joe and you got three homers there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's got to be the favorite field. Right so there. do you, right you now, think, that's do the you think that, that that will be the favorite? I don't know if I if I hit three homers on I'd a be field. I'd there every day. Was that I transferred to that school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's got to be that field now. But uh, I was thinking Curly because it's just it's short there and uh, 
I, it's shorter than Mount St. Joe, but I guess it's got to be Mount St. Joe now. Yeah, well, Mount St. Joe, I think that is a really good feel. I don't know why they were actually in those situations, because one yeah. one will be just to, with no one on base, but it was to, to the go-ahead, and then it was the the go-ahead, and then the third homer was, again, the go-ahead. They were ahead. all three key. So why why the, mm-hmm. why they were even pitching to you on those situations it's out of my mind, to be honest with you. This kid Dude, already. When he tied it up, yeah. I don't this, get it. This, this this guy already hit me twice. He just he just knocked mm-hmm. the face out of me, and then Kraska is crafty, clever. And and I'm going to make the same mistake with the same pitch, because the first one I think it was a curveball, right? Uh, for, no, first one was a fastball, and then the, and then the second two were curveballs. The second two was okay, like, because they're all in two strike count too. Yeah, they they have you on the count, but I think that mm-hmm. I don't know if what the first or second or the second or the third that there was the same pitch actually on the same situation on the same count. I think it was the two. It was the two second ones. They were both curveballs on each count. Yeah, I, I you were waiting for that curveball, or you were just reacting to it. Um, I was honestly just reacting to it. You know, I saw it out of his hand and. Dude, know, you just, swung like you I knew it was coming, it. man. No, I mean somebody yeah. had to tell you what what pitch was that because we we watching actually the the second. This is the second one, right? Uh, no, that, that was the first that one. was the first. That one. was the first one. The third one's kind of choppy. I don't know the video gets kind of <laughs> choppy. No, because on the on yeah, the I don't, I don't know the yeah, and on the third one actually you look like somebody actually called the pitch for you and you were waiting for that pitch because <laughs> you hit that ball like just it was just impressive the <laughs> way with the power that you that you hit that one. Which one was better? The first, the second or the third one? Which one do you enjoy the most? Oh uh, the third one. The third be. one, right? Yeah, just it was the more RBI. I told you that. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's that was it, man. That put them yeah. over the top. We're three three in the fifth, man. Yeah, we were betting mm-hmm. ten bucks to see that you were gonna set the third one. So yeah. So I, I thank you that I just lost ten 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 bucks. I think that the first um, okay. one that that set up everything for you was key. That that mm-hmm. set the table on on what kind of day you were gonna have uh, during the mm-hmm. day. But um, but but it's amazing, Tommy. Do you have any question for for Derek? Because you know I'm. Yeah, ask Derek which pitches he doesn't like. Yeah. <laughs> no. Hey, I'm Derek, don't, don't answer that because you know that, that Tommy just want to do a scout report on you. So no. don't, Derek, don't Derek, that. do you know who Tommy yeah. is? <laughs> do you know who Tommy is? Jeez. Oh, Daddy, you know that Tommy is the assistant coach responding, right? So any question about scouting reports, don't say <laughs> no, anything, no, right? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, honestly, I was just going to ask you, Derek, what adjustments do you make from game one to game two to have that kind of success? Obviously, different atmosphere, having a series where you get to face the same team again. Um, maybe they mm-hmm. pitch you a little bit differently from game one to game two. Ed, did you make any adjustments or you just kind of stay in your own process? Um, I was just tr- I was just trusting my process, and I knew I uh... – I was gonna be able to hit him, hit everyone. Like I was just gonna be able to hit, and uh, I was just trusting, trusting in myself, and uh, trusting what I could do. No, I mean that's awesome. Obviously, and every game, new game, new AB. I mean, just being able to stay within yourself mm-hmm. and being able to reap the success of that—that's awesome to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And you guys got them again on Monday, correct? Monday, yep. Gotcha. Yes. So yeah, and then mm-hmm. who else do you guys have for spring break next week? Uh, I think. That's when we have our our like uh, out of conference games. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know you, who you guys playing? I I honestly don't know. I okay. did not really look at the schedule for next this week. Damn! I told you to be ready for the interview, man. God. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, Derek! Thank you for being with us and calling them out. And hey, thank Derek, you for that was an awesome game, buddy. Yeah, man. Uh, we Thanks, were we were it. we were really impressed. I don't know why other people are actually not giving you credit. Maryland A conference for uh, this. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 why? Why they're not actually jumping? Yeah, I don't know why they're not jumping all over. And, and I don't get it either. They buddy. should be happy for you. You know, mm-hmm. even though that you play for Curly, that you don't play for John Carroll or or, or, or that, that you should you should be they should be actually jumping. Dude, three runs, three runs, three home runs at any at any level. Ten U, eleven U, twelve U, three three homers is just something that you don't see every day. And this kid. Did it? That should be all you over don't see the freaking. Cooperstown. <laughs> you know, right now, that this should be all over social media, or all baseball, you know, there you media go. or whatever. But hey, Derek, you got all, all respect. You know, I think that you are an amazing player. We want to give you all the credit in the world because you're working for that. 
You're a great kid. We love you. you here and we respect you. Yes, absolutely. All right? And if, you. I, I don't care if the you. other players don't give you the credit. Here, mm -hmm. you deserve that, and that's why you are the player of the week. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank all you. Right. Appreciate all you. Take guys. care, man. Take care. Ho see you, hope to, right. to see you soon, all right? Take care, Papa. Yep. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. So that was Derek Paul. Um, um, he's a catcher, right? Yeah, and so they uh, for they, for that. Yeah, they went two and zero. Oh. Good bounce back for them. They uh, they got tough opening series against uh, Cowher Hall, and they they got swept. And they come back right away. And they win the first two against St. Joe to win the series. And like Derek said, they're going to come back on Monday, finish that series up. So uh, yeah, I mean if they're they all of a sudden even up the se their season and uh, they're going to be tied with Loyola there, that puts a that'll put Gilman and St. Joe further down. And like I said, you can't win your seeding and get your positioning early in the playoffs um, this early in the season because of everyone having to play series, but you can obviously do some damage. And so um, th them being e even after two series would definitely be, definitely be huge for Curly and trying to, trying to make the playoffs this year because it's going to be a grind. It's going to be a grind for all seven teams to try to make mm -hmm. it. Again, we're not we're not taking anything away from mm -hmm. Nathan Rodriguez. We're not taking anything away from Drew Elmich. Um, Jack McNally that have defensively, he was amazing, you know, this week. I mean, Toby I mean, Rosenban hit the grand slam for Gilman. Tommy to, Rosenban. To win. I mean, once in the bat, beat John Carroll. Yeah. And you don't and, see that very often. Drew. And then uh, Drew, Drew Elmick, you know. Um, Emmerich. Not, there's no L huh? in his last name. What Emmerich. is it? Say that Emmerich. one more time. Emmerich. 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 Henrik. Emmerich. Henrich. Say Smithsonian. Smithsonian. <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, Juan developed a lisp there. I don't know, know <laughs> man. Uh, did, 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 these people made me uh, mention 10 past presidents, which, you know, I just had to open my wallet and they were there. So that was too easy. And then um, they, they tried to mention uh, 10 states. Yeah, I went to school. No, I just, no, I'm no, not no, too no, good we, in English. We, we didn't do the 10 states. We did, what, what, what was it? We didn't name 10 public schools in Maryland. Oh, 10 <laughs> public no, schools. Yeah, we were doing that. Yeah. Heck, how many presidents? Yeah. What could he name more? Presidents or public schools, schools in Maryland? Yeah, with it. He I, actually I knocked that out of the park. Yeah, he yeah. did. I mean, he started pulling out some of the schools that had the same name from multiple ones. So he pulled out Northeast. He's like, there's two of them. So that counts. Yeah, North County. Like, yeah, North East. Like, right, we're, that we're going to go for a little bit of a cheat code there. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that, 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 that was really good. And nothing to like Dallas Brook that had one homer. And then um, Drew Jordan got two homers, yeah. you know, for Young Carroll. So those kids were. Amazing, they're having um, a really it's, good, but it's an offensive year in the MIA right now. It, well, no, no, don't tell me, <laughs> really, really. I mean, it's it's really cold, and and, and if this cold, oh, usually the pitchers are, are the one, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's only Jager, an offensive Jager year Jager when certain people are pitching. Strikeouts, fourteen strikeouts in six innings. He didn't have any run support like always, so everybody should be really happy right now because every time that Jake. Pitch. Well, first of all, Jake cannot win at Spalding. <laughs> so he was he had that that bounce back. He got yeah, I know. Then he goes and he got the break going to Loyola. Had the game of his life. He was dominant. Six inning, 40 strike out, and then Vargas have to come and close out that, that game. He did well too. He did yeah, a great he did job. really good. So so he's he doing linked one run. He's doing really good. But you know, Great it, job by it being, Jack, though. This is the ugliest three and zero for Spalding that I have ever seen. It was bad. Loyola actually gives Spalding it was a football score on Wednesday. It was it was a it was a back and forward. You know, they played really good. Um, Kelly, I think that uh, that that did a really good job um, trying yeah, to I mean, they, to get to get the the, the games closed. Yeah. He did all the movement, but I think that they're too young. I think that they were they're they're Ooh. too young, Loyola. Oh, eh. <laughs> I think that they're too young, but but I, at the same time, Spalding is not super the, experienced. The, the league's young because so the, 20, the 24 yeah. class is just smaller across the board for most of the teams in the league. So, I mean, the league's very young, so it's not surprising that you're seeing uh, a little bit of craziness across the board. Um, but, I mean, yeah, at the same time, too, it's competitive. I mean, like you saw, Curly comes out, wins the first two games, and they're putting up some runs on a couple good St. Joe yeah. arms. St. Joe still has uh, their Division One guy, Colin Park, coming back on Monday, uh, potentially. Um, you got Nottingham, who threw a really good opening game, and then uh, it, he wasn't as sharp 
against us, but I mean, fastball's still electric. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Rodriguez has looked good for his, his couple of outings so far that he's had Amazing. for Calvert Hall. The, the yeah. whole, well, I mean, yeah. uh, from from Calvert Hall. Everybody looking amazing yeah. right now for Cabrera Hall. They're yeah. doing the job. If you see the highlights, yeah. you know, the left is like pulling the ball, yeah. and the right is actually are, are moving the runners, yeah. getting hitting to the gap, hitting opposite way. You know, they're playing really good baseball right yeah. now. And for me, that's why they're the, the, the team of the week. Um, I think that the Brooks is the is the, is the manager of the week. And I think for me on my power rankings that I'm going to come with Mon- in Monday, I'm going to come with the power rankings. I think the Cabrera Hall should be – in the in the top two, top three right now in the power rankings in 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 all Maryland because my yeah. power rankings will include private schools and public schools, yeah. you know, uh, with that. So no, I mean they've done they've done everything they've needed to uh, when they've stepped on the field and they've been competitive and like, I mean I mean they haven't shown any reason why they shouldn't be and so I mean it until they get knocked off that perch yeah I mean that's where it is and that, that's baseball I mean it's, there's gonna be ebbs and flows. I, I, it's never a wire to wire thing for any team, but I mean, everyone's now souring on Georgetown Prep. Yeah. Georgetown Prep's lineup still pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, solid. Dun- Duncan smoked the ball to left field. There was a no doubter. Weiss had a huge double to the right center field gap. Um, they've got a couple other guys in their lineup that can do some things. CJ can get on the bases and, and run. The Colbert kids got is a consistent bat. They're going to be solid too throughout the year. They're just in a rough patch right now. They, they, after they beat us, then they they've lost a couple games in a row and had a rough trip to Florida. But I, I mean, it's I mean that's baseball. Like I said, it, you have ups and downs, and they're going to find a way to bounce back. The math does start out really hot, and then they just lost a couple. Um, St. John's uh, started out looking solid, and then they lose the one to PVI. Then they yeah. beat, they smack up on us. And then uh, they've had a couple close ones lately. They had a walk-off on uh, Brady Reese Weiss hitting a homer uh, against good counsel. Uh, they had a one nothing win over uh, uh, Bishop O'Connell might have been. How the hell he knows all that? Yeah. And so, I mean. What it, a mind, man. Yeah. It's a wealth of uh well, wealth, wealth of, knowledge. of useless useless knowledge. Yeah, uh, yeah well, wealth of useless knowledge. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's oh, wait, wait do we yeah. get into pro pro wrestling? I'm telling you, that's this WrestleMania right we up have, I'm gonna have is gonna we be have, <laughs> we, we gotta we, all, we, all we you gotta Cody crybabies yeah. out there are in trouble. Yeah, well actually we, we need to have like a wrestler here for the podcast and, and we can interview him. You know, whatever, LA so. Knight's a local guy, right? He really? got the key to the city from Hagerstown earlier that, this year. That's awesome. So so maybe we can have him on the on the podcast. Anything else on the for the public schools, I'm going to come on, on Monday. I'm going to talk to Ryan. I'm going to get all the scores. Who's going to be the manager of the week, the the, the player of the week um, for public schools uh, next week on, on Monday because I know that this week was kind of weird with the with the, with the the rain. A lot of cancellations, a lot of series well, that, say, that they didn't of, finish. A bunch of the teams are in, were in that exposure tournament over at uh, Bland Aaron Joe Cannon this week. So... Um, Kyle's been obviously doing a really good job putting yeah. a bunch of information out on those games. Um, and so, yeah, it's been good just to be able to see uh, a bunch of teams getting to play each other that normally don't play one another. Um, but, yeah, it's just so it's good to be able to see a bunch of them get some games under the belt before they get into regular regular season play. And by regular season play, I mean, like, within their county and who they need to have to win the county each, in each county. Um, All right. So we're going to have a, a surprise guest. Um, right now, in, in, in calling them out for the public school, we cannot let the public school go by, you know, without any presence, all right? Mm-hmm. So, on the phone, we got Frank Hood from Aranda Basel. Frank, good night, and thank you for being in calling them out. Oh, thank you, Juan. How are you doing this evening? Pretty good, pretty good. I mean, we're talking high school baseball here, and, of course, I have to talk to the guys that I know that they're doing a really good job. Um, you've been with Arundel how many years now? Uh, we're eight years at Arundel. Oh wow! Talk to you. Uh, talk to us about uh, the team and the expectations for for this year. I know it's uh, you got a couple of rough games already, but uh, talking to us about you know uh, the team that you have and what are your expectations this year with that team? Uh, we're a real talented team. We're just pretty inexperienced. Uh, we have a small group of seniors. We had a couple injuries. We have uh, a guy with a small uh, torn labor or tear in his labor, and we have a guy who broke his finger, one catchers. 
you know, just trying to get through those things, increasing pitch counts as we go. One of the games we played in, I mean, it, it was a downpour. There was two inches of rain during the game. Yep. But since we were on turf, we played it anyways. Uh, you know, you're never as bad as your worst game. You're never as good as your best game. And we've had some pretty good games, and we've had some pretty bad games. So we're just trying to get that floor to be where it should be. Uh, we have five arms that we think uh, we can trust. Uh can, pretty good on the base pass. Can you mention the go name ahead, of that four, five arms that you have right now? Uh, we got Tamon McGriff, Dom Ercolani, Nick Dolbin, Dom Wilder, and Josh Verdeer. Okay. I know that two of those can throw strike consistently. The, the other three, I think that, that Wilder, um, oh, yeah. El Carlani, and then... Um, Man, calling them out. Why? No, no, I'm not calling them out. I think that that, that when, whenever whenever they throw strikes, you know, and Dolvin, of course, you know, whenever they they throw strikes and they got their their especially the curveball going, you know, they're really dangerous. But but right now, you know, they need to find that, you know, strike zone and throw more strikes, uh, be more efficient so they can help the team more. What what do you think about that, Frank? Oh, that's 100 correct. I mean, they have really good stuff. It's just a matter yep. of commanding the zone. I mean, our two best games uh, from the pitching side were Taymon and Josh so far, and they, you know, pounded the zone. They were about 60% strikes, uh, mixing in breaking ball, uh, change up and fastballs. You know, Josh threw against Parkside. Uh, what was it? Wednesday evening. Under the lights after Parkside had just 10 run uh, Bethesda Chevy Chase. Very good hitting ball club. And uh, he held him in neutral. Uh, you know, he gave up one in three innings. And then uh, we brought Wilder in, who threw some strikes. Yeah. And that was the difference with him. Yeah. You know, yeah, Josh well, is good at mixing it up, a little two seamer away. Changeup had a little cut action to it in the breaking ball. Uh, was just enough. And then you bring in Wilder, who throws a little harder. and Keep yeah. him off balance. Yeah, Wilder is up to 88 right now, and and whenever he can throw strikes and he can stay in the zone, That's it's gonna be dangerous for 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 everybody. You know, we we love Dominic. He's crazy. <laughs> you know, he's uh he's he's like our son, right? <laughs> so so you know, Dom. Uh, but sometimes you don't know what the hell he, he's saying. But you know, he's, he's and then you got El Carlani that. You know, if he can control his temper, he's going to be really good for you uh, for that. But sometimes, you know, he's a kind of a knockout but, uh But we love uh, both Doms. You know, they're, they're, they're like my son, and I love them both. You know, and, and I'm pretty sure that you have a really good crew. When when they that, when they can command that strike zone, they're going to be really dangerous, and they're going to help you a lot. But they have to understand that they need to command and they need to throw strike for in order for Arandel to be a successful team. That's the trick, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's cool. that is always the trick. That it, you that know, it. you throw strikes, you keep the you keep the defense entertained and the defense plays well. You don't throw a lot of strikes, the defense struggles to keep their attention span going, and that's exactly what's happened. We had seven errors in one game Oof. and six in another game, which is not a Recipe for winning. Yeah, it's not well. I, I spoiled it in St. John's, so so they know. <laughs> they know that. Well, that was funny because that was like the day after. I'm like, holy heck, we know how that feels. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I understand. No, I, I've been watching a lot of games, and a lot of games have been like that. Um, but that week, it was bad. It was windy. It was rainy. It, was, uh, it wasn't a, the baseball, actually weather um to be honest with you so i hope in that in the in the couple next weeks you know baseball is they're going to clean it up back to normal and, and they're going they're going to start playing better maybe jake jagger get and, and, and win one game this <laughs> season so so we're just waiting for that maybe but uh frank thank you for, oh, for being with us hey frank yeah. just just one before before tommy because tommy i know it's going to make you like a really smart question you know he's a smart <laughs> guy uh -oh. here But but before you leave, who you think who are the the, the, the powerhouses right now in public school or high school baseball? I can tell you right now, Severna, Severna Park's gonna be really good. Um, very talented, very experienced group in the public school sector. Uh, Stephen Decatur's got a lot of talent, uh, but they've they're Stephen Decatur at this point, right? They got to get by and get themselves. Uh, through 
You got Parkside's very talented. Colonel Richardson over on the shore is talented. I mean, they got a weight commit, and they got uh, the Hessen kid who's honestly a really good left-handed pitcher last few years or four years on the varsity. Uh, Walter Johnson, right? They can pitch, they can play defense, and they can hit. Uh, Magruder's going to be an interesting one. Very talented offensive group. Man, uh, he comes, wants Tommy's job. Side. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, well, no, man. Frank, you you got to kind of know, right? Hey, Frank, I, I Frank think he's deep. He, that's, about, Frank, that's a lot of teams. That's I, more teams than Juan can list. Actually, yeah, I, I did, you know, the, the Decatur, whatever, I never heard of that. Never heard you know, of that's high school. I think they're going to bring Frank here on Mondays, and I'm going to fire Tommy. You know, so, right. so we can, we can talk about public school. So, all Tommy. right, I'm going to put Frank in, on the hot seat. Yeah, what about go. Broadneck and what about Urbana? You just didn't mention those two. Damn. So Urbana, Urbana is a pretty interesting one because I think if Eli was still there, Urbana's at the top of the 4A. Uh, but Eli graduated early and went to Radford, right? Yep. Uh, so you lose your number one arm. And who's who was questionably their number one arm last year, too? Broadneck, man, their lineup one through nine is absolutely dynamite. It's going to be whether they have enough pitching or not. That's true. In all honesty. Mm -hmm. And Matt does, Matt does a great job over there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But they graduated. 75 80 percent of their innings last year so they're inexperienced on the mound but that lineup i think they returned uh eight guys in their lineup and then they turn around and got two really talented freshmen and they had some talented kids come up from the jv too so that lineup can absolutely rake i, I know that especially uh, just across the public school it seems like there are a lot of young guys that are getting chances to play early on i know cooper mangle is playing for broadneck a little bit getting some opportunities um, Alex Rodriguez is playing for Chesapeake, getting some opportunities. Uh, you see some guys that played on the uh, the Dig In national team and, and that are uh, getting varsity appearances, whether it's for Landon School or for Good Counsel or for a couple other places. I know you guys have a young, talented guy. How's uh, how's Luke Gamble looking? Luke Gamble is looking pretty good. He moved into the uh, center field spot for us. He's probably our best guy in the outfield in terms of reads. Uh, the kid is as even keel as you can be. We put him in the leadoff spot. Uh, he's holding his own pretty well. Um, he's hitting over 300. He's got wow. three extra base hits. Uh, he's got what, five or six stolen bases so far. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So he's done a tremendous job. And even when he gets down to two strikes, he battles and battles and battles. Uh, he's a really His dad was a player, guy. was he not? Oh, his dad was a player down at Thomas Stone. I want to say he was Gatorade Player of the Year in 90. Wow. Down at Thomas Stone. Went to Frostburg and was a uh, freshman All-American, I believe. So there's some bloodlines that go there, too. To, to kind of pivot off of that with Luke. So we're, he's looking really good. Good table setter for you guys. Get on base and just compete. How's the rest of the lineup look um, for you guys? I know, like you said, if the pitching's there, you guys are going to be in some games. Um, because those arms are, are are pretty overpowering and have some good stuff, but obviously you do need offense to win games, as everyone likes to remind yeah. us over and over. Oh yeah, I mean, in our two hole, uh, yeah. Tamon McGriff's holding it pretty well. Uh, I mean, just from the exposure tournament the other day, I want to say he picked up four hits on the day, driving the ball mid on away, mm -hmm. getting off the pool side. Uh, Roland Thursby has been pretty good, providing some pop. Uh, Nick Billheimer in our four hole. And then from there, we got a young guy in uh, Grayson O'Donnell in the mm -hmm. five hole, uh, sophomore holding down first base for us uh, pretty well there. And then that's kind of where we kind of try to figure out. We got a guy, Austin Elligridge, who's, who's had put together some pretty tough at bats there in the six. Urkelani's had some good at bats in the seven. Uh, we're going to dove him back into the swing of things. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see where him and Wilder go. Two left-handed sticks that can get, that can hit at any given point in time. And then uh, we have a, another sophomore in Josh Verdeer, who when we put him out there, he handles his own in the outfield. And he handles his own at the plate, uh, at the bottom of the order as a nice little turn the lineup over kind of guy. No, it definitely makes sense, and I, I just want to highlight one of the guys you mentioned, sophomore Grayson O'Donnell. Um, for the for people that don't follow Arundel baseball or aren't following the local travel teams in the area, Grayson played for API, went to Arundel, and is playing for you, Frank. And uh, the kid just worked his ass off for the last couple of years. Um, he's gotten his body changed around a ton. He's getting more athletic. Um, 
if you looked at the way he was at 13 you and you put a side by side of the way he looks right now um he looks completely different so that's just a testament to him and you you love to see kids put in that kind of work see that kind of results and you just it's hard to not root for a kid like that because when they put in so much hard work you want to see him succeed I remember racing when he was eight because his older brother actually played first base and DH for us. Uh, ended up being a four-year long snapper for Salisbury. So, like, yeah, Grayson has put in the work. Uh, he's totally transformed his body. He was always quick for his size, but now he's quicker, more agile. Uh, just looks a lot better than he did even two years ago. No, that's awesome. It looks. I mean, like I said, you guys sound like you're young. It's like you got some inexperience, but it looks like you guys should be able to compete. Like I said, you got you got a bunch of tools that are in there, and uh, you got to have tools if you're gonna have a chance to win. Yeah, I agree with that. It's just getting mindset right. You know, they came out totally different in the Parkside game. That was probably the best we've played all year. I mean, we had a couple errors, but we commanded the zone. We hit the ball pretty well against Parkside's uh, lead guy. So. Mm -hmm. All right, Frank, thank you for being with us. Thank you for uh, putting us, you know, on the, um, to know more about your team, right? Um, we're trying, we're trying to cover everybody from, you know, public school, private school to give Maryland High School the best coverage that we can. And we, you know, having you or having the access that we have to you, pretty much we're going to use you a lot um, just to keep us updated on, on what's going on with the, uh, with Pooley High School because I don't want this only to be just about, you know, like the other pages that is only about, you know, Certain Spalding, teams. Spalding and, and, and John Carroll only. So, so yeah, yeah. This, he, is, this isn't the Jake Yeager no, podcast. No, this is the, the Jake Yeager progress, yeah. So we're trying just to, <laughs> to give up. Hold a second. Hold a yeah, now, so, doesn't Jake got to win a game before? I am telling you, I don't know, man. <laughs> Talk he to needs, Tommy. He needs to start winning games, or they had to pitch in on Monday with a with a really good lineup to to help him out. So, and away from Spalding, so he can actually win a game. So, but, but, oh, yeah. but we're not talking about this. But Frank, next week thank, we're just gonna put a punching bag into my space. Yeah, <laughs> with that. it says "kick me" on the back of it. Hey, Frank, uh, thank you for being here and calling them out. We would love you to have you here in the studio, here in Gambrils, because I know we can be, well, like always, uh, every time that I see you, we talk so much um, about baseball, and you always helping me on all my, all my projects and, and all my ideas, so, so I always uh, pick your brain. Um, thank you for all the help always that you do for Palacios Baseball and, and everything we're trying to do here for the, for the baseball in Maryland. So we really appreciate you, oh, well, all right? We appreciate you just as much, Juan. All right. Take care, man. Have a good night. Take care. All right. Okay, bye. Uh, Juan, I just want to let you know um, that the reviews are in. I don't know. That we got a special review from a guy if you'd like to hear. Sure. Okay, hold on. I watched Calling Him Out with Juan Palacios last Ooh, night. It's really, really Where's good. Um, the stuff he talked oh, about with on, Tommy O'Farrell. Go back to that. Technical difficulties. All right, so... Um, that's it. Uh, what we got on high school baseball. Do you have anything else, uh, Mr. Tommy O'Farrell? No, it's going to be a bye week this week for the MIA. So uh, we're all, we all have some non conference games, whether we're traveling or staying home. Um, so a little bit lighter week for everyone. And uh, public school, like I said, should be off and running. Um, just excited to continue to get baseball in our belt. So that way everyone starts looking mid season form and good teams can really separate themselves from the. And the bad ones and the great teams can really start to separate themselves too. Good. So on Monday we're gonna have um, Ryan, the owner of the page for the high school baseball um, here in Maryland. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the the public schools and we're gonna call out all these coaches that they're not doing their job. If your kid is not playing, let me know so I can call out your the, the, the coaches and all that because I seen in social media a lot of the the dads already daddy ball getting mad. Um, Send me the videos. We're going to do some, some clips about your your son if you want your son to be here. So the biggest daddy balls like Rich Bailey. You know, you can send me all the videos and everything that you got so I can <laughs> I can put it here. Um, who's who's the other one that... Uh... Daddy ball? Daddy ball. There's so many. <laughs> I mean, the Jim Manali is the, the, the biggest daddy ball in the MIAA. Maybe oh. Wally? 
There we go. Maybe Waddy? <laughs> no, I think it really boils down to you every time. Salazar. Jackson. Oh, no. Salazar. No. 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 Oh, no. Salazar. Hey, no. Salazar. I love you, no. but you are the biggest no. daddy ball ever. Yeah, no. Salazar. It's, yeah. it's you every time Jackson Merrill takes an AB for the San Diego Padres. Uh, that's true, but uh, I, I feel proud of that kid. You know, But that, that that's off the chart. I think that Jason, you got a lot of daddy balls, man. Jason Ruiz is one of the biggest daddy balls in, ever in, in the world, right? Wouldn't you agree? Oh, you don't want to comment on that? No, I, I wouldn't agree with that. I, I, parents put in a lot of Who is worse, Salazar or, or Jason? There's no one that's worse. All our guys put in a ton of time and effort. Their parents are driving them all over the place. They're going and doing a ton of extra work with the kids on the side besides just what the kids are doing. Like, there's a ton of stuff that they're doing. So they You don't want to their... call them out? This is the podcast. No. is calling them out. Call no. them out. No. No. No? You don't want to call them out? No. Why would I call them out? They're, they want to see their kids succeed just as badly as we do. That. I mean, why would I want to call them out for wanting to see their kids have success? I, I mean, yeah, if their kids are struck. Matt, Matt, Matt. Yes. Who, who is the biggest daddy ball that, that, that you see so far this year? Oh, uh, live in person? Or? Yeah, live in person. Yeah, you go to a game. I don't know, man. I got I to gotta go with Marty Lewis. Yeah, Marty Lewis. <laughs> we don't mention that, that name. That dude bought an RV yeah, to go oh. see his kid. That, that, that guy made, made a two hundred thousand dollar investment. That, made a, that, a, a that guy made page. a page for <laughs> for his son. I love Marty you know, though. Yeah, that, that's uh, he's a, that, a good dude. But I that think is that's a, that the is the biggest daddy yes. ball. That's that's another. Day. That's daddy ball at the highest level right there. That that's bad. So. All right, so well, hold on, I want to put something up, but yeah, you got to disconnect that blue. Oh, uh, do I need to disconnect yeah, that? Tommy, the Tommy, the camera's going to stretch. Okay, we're good. Stretch. All right, <laughs> so <laughs> so this is what we're gonna do. So for me, like I always said, you know, uh, every time that I see Salazar, I say, Mister Salazar, you are the biggest daddy ball that I ever <laughs> seen. But at the same time, I got a lot of respect for for him for everything that he does, and he does. The Baseball community is really good. So, with the Salazar, all respect, all love. But for me, you are the biggest daddy ball for calling them out. <laughs> all right. Now I got the review up. Let's see. All if right. What is the review stuff. for that? We're calling him out with Juan Palacios last night. Oh. It's really, really good. Um, the That's stuff Rogan? About with yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Jesus. Really opened my eyes. I mean, Juan Palacios might be the greatest podcaster in the history uh. of broadcasting. Truly a giant in the industry. It was a humbling experience. <laughs> Thank you. True. Thank you, yo. True. Thank you, yo. True. That's Thank amazing. Thank you, yo. I, I really. <laughs> wow. I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> That's something that we're reaching new lows every week. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is it uh, for calling them out. Thank you, Tommy O'Farrell. And thank you, our producer, Matt Yeager. Love you. Peace out. Send me the results. Uh, we're going to be talking about public schools on Monday in the high school baseball page. God bless you guys. Tommy's not dancing. Tommy, you gotta dance, Bobby. Let's go, let's go. <laughs>